ladies and gentlemen, film reviews are back. <laughs> back. Last time I reviewed one of Martin Scorsese's most well-known films, Taxi Driver. The original plan was to do a Predator Marathon and uh, review every film in that franchise. I did watch all of them except for the latest one, thank God. But then Henry fell off the face of the earth again, and I just assumed that he was dead. By the time he resurfaced, I had stopped even writing the reviews. I was simply just watching movies for the fun of it. And let me tell you, I came away with a bunch of new favorites like Robocop, Goodfellas, Halloween, and Reservoir Dogs. Today, however, we are reviewing a film that is much different than the classics that I just mentioned. Today I will be reviewing a film from New Zealand called Guns Akimbo, and I actually watched this movie back in November, but Henry started doing a bunch of solo stuff that's really good, so like I'm going to say at the end, go check out his channel. Anyways, um, Guns Akimbo is a movie I had just learned about it, kind of the same way a lot of people learned about it. Um, it's from a meme that surfaced back in 2018 of the film star Daniel Radcliffe clad in a bathrobe and tiger feet slippers dual wielding handguns captioned the new Harry Potter movie looks great. Uh, two years went by and I just assumed the movie had been released and flopped or had just been outright cancelled. That was until I saw this badass movie poster which I'm hoping that Henry will put on the screen here. Where was I? Uh, immediately after that, I went to look for the trailer, and there it was. I p planned to potentially watch it in theaters, but then everything closed down. The world went to shit, which is also why I didn't do film reviews. I think I mentioned that, though. But thankfully, it still came out with Amazon Prime. And, uh, anyways, I feel like I've given enough background, so let's just get into it. What happens when you wake up one day, and you have, you have gun hands? That's probably the pitch that was given for this movie, but it works. The film follows Daniel Radcliffe's character, a total loser named uh, Miles, uh, which is, you know, a very loser-like name. By day, he's a programmer for a cash-grabbing app, but by night, he is a social media terminator. Or just simply an internet troll. That is until he hops onto a live stream deathmatch called Schism and starts trolling people in the chat. That's when people in charge of Schism track him down and bolt guns to his hands, forcing him to compete for not only his life, but the life of his ex-girlfriend Nova. I don't know, just leave your exes be, fellas. The problem is the person he's competing against is the competitor at the top of the leaderboard, who is an unhinged woman named Nyx, who is played by Samara Weaving. Uh, now, there's a lot more to this movie and a couple of plot twists and revelations throughout the movie, but you'll have to watch the movie. Now, right away, I do have a few criticisms. Nyx doesn't really have a lot of depth to her. She's simply just a psycho killer. It does go into her backstory a bit, and it l starts to look like her backstory is going to play a more important role in the movie, but it ends up just being kind of shut down. Which is a shame, because I feel like it would have been really interesting, because her character, her character was something. <laughs> Drink the lot! However, if they would have done that, I do feel like there would have, there would, wouldn't have been quite as much of an action-packed ending. And looking back on it now, the ending would have been just as satisfying as they had they gone down the road it looked like they're going Jesus I probably could have worded that worse now the rest of the things I have to say about the movie are great it was action-packed it was funny and the visuals were also up to par meaning they're pretty awesome those camera camera angles were definitely unique and something you don't see in any other kind of movie although it will probably make you throw up Probably the funniest things to see in this movie is Miles trying to do tasks like drive a car, get dressed, eat, and go to the bathroom, all while having guns bolted to his hands, especially when he goes to the bathroom and tries not to shoot his dick off. That was probably the hardest I've laughed at any part of this movie. 
Another thing that made this likable is the soundtrack, which features covers of Ballroom Blitz and You Spin Me Around, uh, performed by Three Teeth, which is a band I have really kind of been getting into, so that's kind of cool. Both songs I do know as well, and a lot of people do as well. So, lastly, the film did a really good job with its commentary on social media and thinking about what you say before you say it on social media. Did it work for me, though? Nope, I'm still the same shit poster I've always been. Anyways, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my other content as well. If you like YouTube poops, be sure to check out Henry's vid channels, Plumtopia and Plumtopia 2. Till next time, this is Brock Davis from Talent Entertainment signing off. They bottled this shit.